Okay. All right. So uh, this is the plan for today. Okay. I'm going to, I am going to stop. It's going to record and upload it for, for the people that aren't here. First of all, um, I'm going to tell my plan is to tell you what the protocol is for, what, what I use it for. Um, and so the vast majority of you in this, in this space are hypnotherapists, you all experience hypnotherapists, but as well as that, I've got a few people that are not hypnotherapists. Um, some people have come through well, just friendships, other people have come from um, teaching background. Uh, so, and there are some, a couple of people here that haven't actually had any hypnosis before at all. So I'm going to um, tell, tell you as a hypnotherapist what I use it for, but just for the people that aren't hypnotists, if it's not, you know, the, the, you might be interested in how it came about and less, less in the, the mechanics of it, but you just have to bear with me. It won't be too long in it. Um, and I'll, I'll explain which technique. So as well as it will then experience the hypnosis that you have, you'll, you'll, and I'll explain to you if you're interested, well, I'm assuming you're interested, what, what the mechanics are and how I've constructed it and how it will help you or how it will help other people should you want to use it. I already said to those, so I, because I use this primarily for, well, I use it the most for smokers. It's my, it's my, not, I don't always use it for smokers, but I use it for smokers when I know that someone's really kind of like open. So I'll use it with people that have done a lot of drugs, um, particularly, um, and, or people who are just quite obviously open and are not. So quite left field. If someone's doesn't feel if someone feels quite straight to me then I probably won't go to this one first but if I have a good rapport a good relationship and then I'll feel actually or if they've got a history of abuse um self-esteem issues then I will I will use I will use this protocol and I really like it um but it's but it but you'll see why I might have reservations about about who I use it with and why I don't always always want to use it um so yes yeah, as, as well as uh, so I'll explain the protocol, explain how it came about, then we'll do it. And then at the end of that, um, you can ask me any questions about it if you want. If you want it, I'll give you the, I'll, I've, I've actually written a script for it because I did Chris of Beaumont's. I did the Albatross last year on Chris's site and she asked me to write it up. So I've done that. So if anyone wants to use it, you can have it. You give me an email and that's it. So I've already said, so yeah, so use it for smokers, uh, mainly smokers. I use it in a second session um and i yeah so so yeah and for people which i don't know why it's for people with abuse but for me it comes about from a trauma so for uh, put your hands up if you if you if you've done any of like carl smith's kinetic shift if you've ever experienced that yeah okay so quite so a few of you okay what about frank um freddie's the arrow yeah so most of most of you so between those two things right now i I had this protocol. What happened for me is I was teaching um, and I was pretty close to a nervous breakdown. I think I was having a nervous breakdown. I hadn't slept for about six months. And the reason why this was in, uh, by this point, I had my, my two, two young children. I had a three-year-old and a, a one-year-old. And I was in a very, I was in an outstanding school. Uh, it was a high pressure school. It was like no contract. So I was under pressure to perform. And I knew that if I didn't perform really well, I'd, you know, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't keep the job. I, my, my youngest was in nursery, uh, just, and it was just massively stressed. So this comes after years of being really, really stressed. And uh, I hadn't slept and I was kind of like a, a totally like, yeah, breaking point. So anyway, I went to see a hypnotist for this, um, for, for my lack of sleep. And we did some sessions. But prior to teaching, um, I was having, you know, I had, so even within teaching, because I was thinking I was being bullied at school, and I was having performance anxiety. So I was before going into a class. So I'd come from being a very strong performer, like doing stand up comedy, writing theatre. And not, not, not to say that I haven't had performance anxiety, but that's very different from the place where I was at, which was basically trembling outside a classroom, unable to worry about whether I can actually speak in front of people. Because that's the point, that's the low point that I got to, where I was actually could barely sort of like bring myself together and that's just the stress of like having you know like thinking it was a breakdown and not being able to sleep so after a few sessions of hypnosis you know just in fact the very first session of hypnosis i had i just burst into tears and was crying just a relief of being able to talk to someone and um and through through that obviously just got into a better place it was by no means like as you all know from hypnosis it's not like 
you have a hypnosis session, everything's better immediately. It's a process of, of healing and working out where, where the problems are, the blocks and confronting stuff you might not have wanted to confront. But as a result of that, that, that hypnosis, I was in a much better place and I could already see that, you know, that I needed to make some changes. So probably about a month after that, or might be two months after that, I don't know the time scale, but I woke up and I had this incredible dream and it was this, the albatross. And I dreamt, uh, and I think I've said this before so to somebody already say, I do not like violence. I, I like violence makes me ill. Like, well, I mean, I, I watch violence. The team, my, my husband likes a lot of gangster stuff. And I, most of the stuff I watch is, it's, a, it's not necessarily what I would choose, but I, you know, but I jo enjoy watching certain stuff. And I also like have to close my eyes when there's like torture and stuff. But I had this dream where uh, I killed, I was killed, I killed a shot, an albatross. And, and I shot it and it was lying on the beach and I felt this incredible jubilation. I felt amazing. I thought, this is incredible. Uh, and I knew, I knew what it meant. And I knew, it was one of those great dreams that I knew I woke up, but I know exactly what this is. This is a dream telling me you need to stop teaching, stop looking, stop treating the symptoms, stop treating the stress and this and that and treat the thing that's making you feel shit. I never wanted to be a teacher anyway. And I did teaching for 16 years. I never wanted to be a teacher. I was a teacher because I thought it would support me doing writing. Um, not that I, I was doing stand up, I was doing writing. And then that's a whole nother saga with lots of trauma there for another time. But within that albatross is all the trauma within where I had been. Because I thought when I walked out, walked away from stand up comedy, I was walking away from certain trauma, trauma in relationships, trauma in um, certain things that had that sort, of, sort of culminated in one bad relationship that was actually a culmination of all the trauma before that and I thought I was walking away from all of that and actually I was just kind of like burying it and I stayed in teaching for 16 years with a lot of uh, you know with a lot of you know I'm not saying there was there were some great times in teaching and then there's lo loads of stuff I really value in it but ultimately it wasn't my life it wasn't my calling I didn't feel anyway so the albatross shot the albatross felt amazing and then for I, I'm going to be a hypnotherapist because I obviously had because I'd, I'd been had this hypnosis. Well, this is my skill set. I can do this. This is this is incredible. This stuff is amazing. And um, so at that point, I, thought, I need to stop teaching and become a hypnotherapist. So that was uh, took process from there from the albatross dream to about three years, and then started training. I went to, to uh, so I did some very poxy course, not that in Hertfordshire, and then I did the Mike Mandel course. And I think he was, uh, I wasn't conscious of it, but it's now I look back and think, well, actually, here's was the first storytelling. The Albatross is a story. I, I do the hypnosis within a story framework. And actually, Mike Mandel does a lot of storytelling. So the influence is there from that. Um, and then discovered, so yeah, so with the Albatross, I then looked up the poem. Um, do any of you, are any of you familiar with, with Samuel Coleridge? It's, it's called The Ancient Mariner. Uh, and so, yeah, so my background was in theatre anyway, theatre and, and literature. So when I had this dream, i have heard of the albatross uh, and I knew that it was something, it's a, it's a burden that you have, we use it, so it's just like an albatross around your neck, it's a burden that we carry. So I knew what that meant, um, but I didn't really, so I wanted to, I was curious, so I looked at this poem by Samuel Coldridge. I thought this will make a great, once I started studying hypnosis and understanding hypnosis and realised what hypnosis was, that this would make a great hypnosis, hypnotic, hypnotic protocol. By that time, I'd also encountered uh, Cole Smith's teachings, his training, um, and I've included kinetic shift within it. So I know for like for you non the non hypnotists, this is all a bit like yeah la la la, but it's 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 quite it's very useful. And um, but um, so yes, yeah, so within this protocol, it's a story. The story enables you to go into a trance because it obviously takes your unconscious mind on a bit of a journey. Um, and then within it, then you're getting an opportunity to unload something. So it's also using NLP. If you think about, about the kinetic shift, uh, that is really a bit of NLP, you know, take the color out, what, what color is it? Carl Smith just let go of all the feeling, you know, feelings of shame, pain, whatever, let, let it go, let it go. Freddie Smith's like, shoot all that shit <laughs> with the arrow, just shoot it all out. Um, but within, so within that, it's kind of the same sort of ingredients. You've got a bit of NLP, you've got hypnotic suggestions, and you've got a story to let you go into a trance. And it's really powerful. And what would be really helpful for you to get what you want to get out of it today is to think of something you want to get rid of, think of a block, think of something that's holding you back, 
think of something that that makes you feel bad you know when you or, or something where you can feel where you feel physically um and i know for me when i feel stressed or overwhelmed it's always my stomach uh, it's always well stomach in my head but um but i but i really feel stuff in my stomach um and yeah so it would so when we do the the protocol it'd be really good for you to think of something that you want to get rid of and you'll get an opportunity to physically unload physically get rid of it you know so and and you know if if you want to move move you know because obviously as you know from like N N well you may or may not know but from NLP code two it's much more engaging way where if you actually physicalize stuff you're going to get you're going to get a better quicker result and for me I I definitely always use NLP in, in my hypnosis and I do really think it sort of like improves the results that well for me I find that I get much better results because I incorporate NLP as well as into hypnosis because some some people prefer it anyway some people like like stuff to do um, some people just want to trans but if you do both then it kind of uh, covers it so yeah any questions so far going into my teacher mode <laughs> no okay all good yeah all right so that's I've, I've whizzed through that okay so that's good in that case um as i said there's a few people that have never done hypnosis so what i thought might be quite nice is we'll just do uh like a like a demo really before we actually go into it and you can so yes yeah, in terms of explaining to you what hypnosis is um Min, can i ask you have you had hypnosis before no okay there's um i wonder if, i'm trying to find is it vanessa's made it on here i don't didn't see her but she might have popped up when i wasn't wasn't was talking Sorry, I'm just unmuting. Yeah, Nessie is here. Um, her name hasn't come up. It just says the name of her device. All right. What's, what's the name of her device? I'll call her that. No, hold on. Let me scan through. Are you there, Nessie? Are you unmute yourself? Uh, hey, oh, hi, Rahul. There she is, Samsung. Okay, so, Samsung. Oh, that's... Oh, shit. That's, Nessie was first. I didn't even recognise you. Okay, up. Oh, ah, that, I know it was you. You're the one that nearly kicked out. <laughs> okay, have you have you had have you had hypnosis? You know, you're, you're, you're still muted, Ness. You are you on mute? Hello. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, trying to work this device out. Yes, yeah, so I have had a couple of sessions with the guy that my sister knows that has. Uh, so I've I've had it before. Um, and I've done some Reiki like years ago. So yeah, I quite enjoy the hypnosis. Yeah, quite like it. Excellent, good, that's good. So anyway, thank you for that. All right, so, well, basically you're all experts anyway, so we don't really need to do much. I'm just gonna do, but we could just start with magic hands just to demonstrate for a few people here that this is a collaboration. Um, it's a, I mean, everyone, no one really agrees on what hypnosis is, I really like, the expression and this was a Mike Mandel expression I don't know if it was his or it's something he got from someone else but hypnosis is not what you think it is is what you think it is and I really like that and um, that sums it up for me because whatever you think is real it is it feels real which is why when we're telling ourselves negative stuff like I can't cope I can't do this this is all too much that's what it is and when we're telling ourselves this is fine this is relaxed this is easy this is good this is great. This is, you know, then it is. So it's all, it's all self hypnosis. It's all what we believe. Um, and that to me, and it's an altered state and allows us to choose the programming, choosing, choose what we believe. And in it, we are manifesting our own reality by, because by creating, because it's our, our senses, isn't it? What we, our perception is what we perceive our world to be. And so if we can program and, change our perception and that then we are obviously changing our, our reality okay so let's 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 start off with that uh let's start off with put your hands out in front of you like that okay about five or six inches apart and you can close your eyes and as you close your eyes i want you to just imagine you've got two in fact you can open your eyes again so i've done this in the morning. Just imagine you've got magnets there and there inside of your hands powerful magnets Okay, and now you can close your eyes. I want you to imagine you've got those powerful magnets and they're pulling your hands together and just really sort of tap into that energy in between your hands. That's right. Just really feel it and feel that, that, mag that magnetic sort of sense, that feeling, pulling your hands together like powerful magnets force, either real or imagined. They're pulling your hands closer together. 
That's right, they're getting stronger and stronger. And the more powerful that gets, the better it feels. The better it feels, the more powerful it gets. And they are going pulling closer and closer. And your hands will eventually touch. And when they touch, I want you to take in a slow, deep breath and just feel that breath like a wave all the way through your body, feeling incredible. That's right. When your hands are already close, just let your hands float down perfectly. That's absolutely perfect. There you go. That's lovely. And that just shows that you've got an imagination. Of course, you could stop that. You could think, I'm not fucking moving my hands, but why would you want to do that? You've, come, you've created this time. Or you could just put it together, just like as a conscious act. But actually, what you all did, you did perfectly. You just imagined that you could imagine that thing. And as you imagine it, it happens. And that is pretty much what happens to us all day long. And I always show this to, to smokers. I'm going to refer to smokers primarily because it's the one that I do the most often. And I do the albatross most often with smokers, even though it's got, you know, I, just, I treat it with people that have had trauma, but they come to me for smoking, but generally they've had trauma and for something they've resonated with the way that I, I do my social media. And I deliberately, I deliberately attract certain people that I know that I'm going to be able to have be open with myself and have, and have a, you know, so anyway, so yeah, so um, I will always start with, uh, with doing some like magic, ha magic hands, magic thumbs, um, magnetic thumbs, sorry, ma magnetic hands. And this really is to just demonstrate, because obviously the power that we have on ourselves before we, as a smoker, you know, like I am, I am addicted. I am, I can't give up. You know, I, you know, I, I can't sleep when I don't smoke, whatever it is, you know, when you see that, that, that the power of your hands moving together by your own thoughts, that is exactly what happens with it. Something like smoking or addictions, or the things that we tell ourselves. So it's a really good, very quick way to just show them the power of their own minds and how it's affecting them and their relationship to, to, to smoking right at the beginning before we get into the hypnosis okay so right gonna do the induction gonna do my favorite induction <laughs> my favorite induction is a bob burns induction called the swan <laughs> but due to uh unforeseen circumstances and in honor of my very good friend who's here i name no names i'm, I'm renaming it i'm not calling it the swan tonight <laughs> i'm calling it uh not tonight lara <laughs> there you go and can you both can you, can you, can you like that one <laughs> okay not tonight uh i'm too tired oh go on no i'm too tired. what about if i wear my funny hat no okay i'll fuck off then all right anyway make your hand nice and limp and loose all right <laughs> nice and limp and loose all right just the way we like it <laughs> all right uh okay and all i want you to do is move your hand so it's about six inches all right let's not you know i'm saying six inches it's up to you you know everyone has their preference you can make it five if you like it's really i'm not going to be measuring it uh you can have it just just so it's quite close to your face right and make it loose and relaxed and i'll take a slow deep breath in and i should have asked you all are you ready to go into hypnosis yeah good all right have something in mind that you really, that you really want to change or you want to relieve yourself from all right okay now just look at look at that hand all right look at your hand really fixate your attention on that hand in front of you just completely engage your interest and your attention on that hand in front of you because i'm not really speaking as you know you'll know that you have a conscious mind then you also have an unconscious mind. Your conscious mind is very intelligent. You know, we've been engaging with it right now. I've been engaging with it anyway. We talk and you synthesize, you analyze and, you know, remember bits and forget other things. In fact, you know, the well-known piece of information is that our conscious mind is capable of retaining five bits of information plus or minus seven. However, if I was to ask you something or if one of your kids or partner or friends to say something to you and interrupt you you'd forget you'd lose one of those bits of information because your conscious mind can only attend to so much at one time however your unconscious mind knows no limits to time or space it's fast and it can attend to everything simultaneously without any help from you it's the thing that controls your blood flow and i'm speaking right now to your unconscious mind i'm speaking I'm speaking to your hand right now, that hand, speaking to that hand. And when that hand 
of yours, that incredible, powerful hand that's attached to your unconscious mind, the deepest possible core of you, when that unconscious part of you is ready, when that hand is ready to let you experience a trance, a profound hypnotic trance that's going to enable you to make powerful changes today. Now, I want you to let that hand move all the way to your forehead, so it's facing your forehead, and as it moves slowly, or actually at the other perfect pace for you, I want you to allow yourself to go into a wonderful hypnotic trance. That's right, you're doing this perfectly, just allow that hand to take, you can trust your unconscious mind. That's right, because your unconscious mind is powerful, it's been with you the whole time. That's right, just let it go. That's right, just let that hand take you wherever it needs to go for you to experience a really powerful trance. Now let your let every breath take you deeper now. Let every word I say take you deeper inside now. That's right. And when you're ready, and if you want to, you can always let that hand begin to drift down, float down, drop down, whatever feels comfortable for you. And when it drops down, I want you to let on yourself just to go into that really wonderful trance. That's right. And you can move around at any point it's not going to allow you to go deeper that's right just get let yourself go all the way now you're doing this perfectly that's right every breath can take you deeper now every word i say can take you deeper inside now because as you know hypnosis is not what we think it is it's what you think it is and i'd like you to imagine a time long ago you know, when you remember learning something, you know, something important to you, something that you learn on an incredibly deep level. You know, perhaps this learning is a, you know, coded deeply inside of you as an image or a feeling. You know, it might even, it might even be a smell or a colour, because your unconscious mind remembers things in ways which are unique to you. And some people believe that your unconscious minds, our unconscious minds are all linked together like stars in a galaxy or a super speed highway, lots of interconnected roads all joining us together. And if we allow ourselves to really relax and access your highest wisdom, you know, you can tune in to our intuitive antennae, the super consciousness of space and time. And that is why sometimes, you know, even before the days of the internet, for travel, for boats, planes, trains and cars, amazing pieces of art, bearing striking similarity and theme, idea or colour could be produced by two different artists simultaneously. They've never even seen each other's work. So whatever you believe about your unconscious mind, whether it's just a part of your mind, it remembers everything that ever happened to you, every feeling, every smell, experience and thought. Whoever you believe is even more powerful than that and contains all the wisdom from this life of yours. All the learnings as well as all the wisdom and learning from past lives you may have had. Now, whoever you believe it, the unconscious mind is your mind alone. There to control your breathing, your heart rate and the way you Release hormones to let you unwind now. Let your unconscious mind remember a time when you learnt something so deeply and powerfully that when you woke back up to reality, or rather when you woke into reality, you had the strongest desire to tell your story that you've learnt but can't quite remember. Because you knew that Whenever you tell that story, you experience the most amazing relief from all your previous pain, relief from your previous compulsion to act and behave in a certain way. And somewhere, somehow, you cast off your pain. And you don't remember how you did it, but you remember that after years of it, you become free and are able to remove your burden. 
And a long time ago, you were on a journey, you know, or perhaps it was a dream. You'd arrived back from such an extraordinary life changing experience. That you felt compelled to share your story. In fact, each time you tell your story, your heart heals a little more and you feel an urge to connect to others with love. You remember a wedding, a happy occasion, and it's daytime and the wedding is somewhere exotic. And as you watch the guests head up a beautiful cobbled pathway, which is lined by beautiful flame trees, so called cool because of their amazing orange and red flames, often found in places like Cyprus. And you see lots of people, lots of faces. And there's one particular person who you feel needs to hear your story so they too can release your pain and live fully in life again. And even though they are excited and on their way to the wedding, you tap them on the shoulders to stop them and tell them you have a story to tell them. The wedding guests look at you and they can see you have extraordinary power. And because you have lived through an enormous transformation, your eyes are hypnotic. And keep this guest stood there. The guest feels unable to move and so go deeply into trance now as they stare into your eyes, wanting to learn what you've learned, wanting to cast off pain and become free from the habit, from the behavior or thing or person that has caused you to feel trapped. And while you're watching the guest fall deeply into hypnotic trance, you relay the time when you were the captain of the boat. And the boat had been very big at one point, with smooth wooden decks, and it's surrounded by people who you knew, people who looked up to you for command. You were the one in charge. You were the one navigating. You were the one navigating, telling people which direction to go in. And their opinions matter to you. You were the captain of that almighty boat, deciding which way to go and how best to respond to the unpredictable elements. Everybody on that boat depended on you for your direction and ability to be decisive, your ability to change direction when necessary. Perhaps it was a different life, perhaps it was a dream. In your life, you've known some happy times, have you not? And you recall these times, and as a captain of the boat, you've known some calm days in the sea, some gentle times. When the sea is calm and the wind blows in the right direction, you remember the boat traveling along at good speed. And there have been times when you felt certain of your direction and safe in the boat, surrounded by people you know. And there have been times when you've had such fun and the sound of laughter can often even now ring in your ears. But one particular time you can remember, perhaps you can imagine, or perhaps you can dream, as it really doesn't matter at all to your unconscious mind, which learns in such a powerfully diverse way, the time when you, the time when the sea became quite treacherous, the sea rose and the wind blew and you became frightened. The boat seemed to toss in the waves and made all those around you feel uncertain. And they looked to you for direction. You were the captain. It was this one particular time that you recall that has changed things forever for you. That time when the boat traveled through fog, gray mist, and those around you didn't know where to go. Some of them became so afraid. They started to wail as though their lives were in peril. You remember that time. You had a choice to make. And now, when you think of it, it reminds you of other times or things. The thing you did, you did because you thought it might help. You reached for something, a decision, 
an action, a behaviour, hoping it would bring peace, hoping it would make you calm, hoping it would make you feel safe, hoping it would stop the uncomfortable sensation you thought perhaps it would bring you joy and connection, would make you feel that everything was okay. But the thing you did that time, the thing that you took, the thing you hurt, the thing you said, the thing you watched, the thing you saw, the behaviour has caused you to suffer for many years. And just when everybody on the boat was shouting around you, telling you to help them because they and you were lost at sea. And everybody was scared. You remember how to your amazement, this beautiful bird appeared, this mighty albatross, a huge bird sent by God or perhaps manifested by the powers of your unconscious mind. But you alone, the captain of your ship, knew that this bird had mythical powers. And so, as the bird flew above you, its wings spanning more than a, the length of the boat, you instructed the ship to follow it. And you did this with the belief that this was the answer. Believing this was the key to your salvation. and everybody else's on the ship and you followed the bird believing it would bring you out of the quagmire and the confusion and perhaps for a while it did but if it did it was for a very short while because no sooner had the boat begun to move the confusion became worse again and the ship became stuck and the mist got thicker and the fog got heavier and when the beautiful albatross let out an almighty squawk and grew talons and circled above your head, you became so scared for your life and the life around you. And you became filled with doubt. And you lost your faith and you panicked. And not knowing what to do, you shot the albatross dead. And the boat appeared to move again. And everybody cheered, everybody thanked you for saving them from this threatening animal. And everyone included you rejoiced. And at first, everybody supported you and everybody told you that it was the right thing to do. And now you'd find your way back home. And for a while, the boat set sail again. The wind blowing in the right direction, but the triumph was short lived. And before long, the mist returned and the fog grew thicker and the boat became stuck, unable to move. And because it was stuck there, the people, the ship began, began to starve. And they all turned to you, they turned against you, and they blamed you, and they became angry with you. They were so angry with you for killing that beautiful albatross, for shooting that beautiful thing that had been sent to save you. And they hung that albatross around your body. They hung it on you. And perhaps you can feel the weight now as you remember or imagine or dream where in your body do you feel it? Where do you feel that weight? Imagine it now, just imagine it. Where is it in your body? You thought you were doing what was right for everybody, but they blamed you and they shamed you and they hung that bird around you, tied it to you. Maybe they tied it around your neck or your back. Perhaps they tied it to you so you could drag it through the years because every day you've been feeling the weight of it ever since. Every day you felt that weight around you. And sometimes you can see it as a color that bird they hung on you, what colour is it? Is it moving? Is it growing? Does it make a sound? After that event, after that bird was hung around your body, it got worse each day, each month, each year. And you forgot that this was a bird that had been hung upon you. You forgot that this was the cause of that confusion frustration, sorrow, discomfort, because over time it began to feel like a part of you, a heavy cloak of shame. You began to feel obliged to wear that discomfort forever, a penance for what you did each moment, each day, each week, each year, but then one day something wonderful happened that enables you to make a powerful shift. A person or entity 
who you love so very dearly, a person who is wise beyond consciousness, a person who embodies wisdom of the highest order, sends a message right at the centre of your heart and tells you exactly what you need to hear. Let go now of that old shame. Let go. Let go of that old mistake. Let go. Let go of that useless habit. Let go. You are love. You are loved. And it's time to forgive yourself and reclaim the power of the moment. Let go. You can let go. Feel the love. Feel my love. Feel my love. Let it go. And that wise person who you love with all your heart, who you trust with every cell in your being, who you know has your best intentions at heart, tells you to take the albatross from your body, take it off, lift off that burden, remove that thing now. Do it, as you physically do it, take it off. Whatever you feel, just take it off, feel it coming off it. Whether it's, I don't know, colour, just feel it being taken off, you're being dragged off, and actually physically take it off and see it as it's being removed from you, see it as a colour, see it as an object, just see it, feel it being removed from you, feel me taking it off you, just get it, let it go, let it go. And as you remove that thing now, you lift that burden, take the albatross from your body, lift it, blow it away, crumple it up, shoot it, do whatever you need to do, just remove it, and feel it being lifted off you and you do because you look into that person's eyes and you know that they love you and they want what's best for you you take the albatross from your body you see yourself lifting the weight feel the relief as you lift the weight and you become free and as you lift the bird from off your body something amazing happens the bird becomes alive again and flies high up into the sky the beautiful albatross is alive all the time, like all good fairy tales, you only had to lift the weight off and become free. And as you watch that beautiful, mighty white bird circle high up in the sky, you know now that you will always be free, that you've set yourself free from the previous trouble and now are embracing a life of wonder, joy, connection, faith. And every day you carry an image of that albatross with you in your mind, it's an image of joy spiritual strength, faith, determination. And from now on, you will be free to trust your highest vision. You will be true to your highest ideals. What is it you most want to do? What's been holding you back? Where is it you want to be? Where do you want to fly to? And every day you will rejoice in your freedom, in the lightness of your body and make choices that will fill your journey with light and laughter the albatross becomes a symbol to you of your new life. Wonder for the journey. And you know you will arrive at your destination happy, positive, energised and filled with a wonderful life. And when your unconscious mind has accepted all the changes, the transformations, the directions that can continue to work tonight as you sleep, for the day, unlocking parts of you that have been locked, You know, I want your unconscious mind to fully accept changes that have been made and let these shifts continue to grow in strength through time. And in a moment, when we count to five, we can come back to now, feeling energized, relieved, lighter, ready to start a new project, feel relieved excited so coming back on the count of five just take a few moments just to go over and process one taking a slow deep breath and let that oxygen just go to your lungs and your heart to every cell every fiber every neuron every atom two energy returning to your hands and your toes wherever it needs to go three have a stretch on four, eyes opening for five. <laughs> That's the albatross.
Don't say wakey wakey. <laughs> Okay, if anyone wants to ask, you can um, can unmute, uh, you can ask me any questions. Um, oh, that's nice. Oh, nice, Grace. Thank you for that. Oh, brilliant. I'll have a, I'm really poor at multi-skilling, so I'll have a look. Oh, so Bridget's had bad audio. That's annoying. Yeah, right, Grace. I mean, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you hear me, Lara? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I didn't hear... 90% of it. Oh. it does that have in the sense that I can hear you but I just was just so was so deep so yeah just, I could hear bits and bats so to think that it will still obviously will still get the same from that's, it that's the idea that's what I that's that well I say it's the idea but that's what I would like because the story is a story I'm not really expecting you to follow it consciously. It's just yeah. story that gives me a structure to, mm. to give you a structure. So it just takes you up in a trance. The stuff at the beginning is to split the conscious and the unconscious mind. That already sets the trance off. Then you go, hopefully go deep. And then, then yeah, so I think that's ideal. For me, that would be how I would like to experience it, how I like, how I like to experience it. So. Oh, good. Well, then I'll keep you updated because that was it. that's exactly how I experienced it. Because then I think when you said, oh, something about color i was like well i don't i just i just went with it because i had no idea what color it was so i've, I've got a feeling inside so yeah it was wonderful lara okay. it was Thank absolutely you. wonderful that's great so you managed to get rid of some stuff as well because that's the other thing obviously there's two things i really kind of like hope for people that they can get a transfer they forget and also that they can re remove stuff that they physically can engage physically so they're mm. so they're hypnotized so you're actually taking stuff off and yeah that's this isn't it yeah, felt yeah. it felt felt so good, so good. Oh, Thank you. That's right. oh, please. <laughs> yeah, is there any other questions or? I just wanted to say, I went really deep, and my dog's beside me, and he's snoring. He went really deep as well. It was absolutely. It was just lush. It was lovely. I really enjoyed it, and just like I think Grace said. The trance was so good and so so well done, splitting all the parts of the conscious and the unconscious. I think that's why I went so deep. So I, I absolutely loved it, loved it. Thank you. Oh, thank you, so, you know, it's such a it is such a privilege to to have an audience like you lot. It really because it doesn't really get much better than trained therapists, does it? <laughs> of, um, just yeah, to experience something and get feedback from. Um, I, I mean, I, I do like it. Can you see why I'd have reservations about doing it? Why I wouldn't do it with every client? Hmm. So That's... why is that? Pardon? Um, why is it that you don't do it with every client? What, well, you ask me why I don't do it with every client. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think because I, well, this is, you can tell me if this is, you disagree. My concern is that for some people, I feel like if they've never had hypnosis before, is going to be too unconventional there when in terms of like their expectations to lie down and just go you know like counting down and then and then suggestions um that i feel like doing it embedding it in a story might be just too uh yeah you know, too much too much for them and make them uh you know unsettle them and that, that's why but you know maybe i i, I can't i can't i only so that's why if it's people that have done a lot of drugs then i'll be more like to use it on a first session but um, I don't even like doing ego states on a first session, you know, like we're getting the client to talk because some people are really uncomfortable even with that kind of because they'll see it as like role play. But um, uh, yeah. How did you find it? Mark? I liked it a lot. I thought it was kind of humorous because I actually had a, it wasn't a bad experience, but in my seventh grade class, I broke my hand and the teacher made me do the entire reading of the albatross and all the questions when everybody else was done. Ah. So the al so the reading of the albatross became my albatross. Wow, that's really funny. So, but I loved your session, I really did. Oh, thank so you. So I guess my, my, my question is, would somebody's experience of that poem influence this or is it all just being processed by the subconscious? Possibly, it's a good question. I mean, I did actually write, because I, I hadn't read this poem until I had my dream. So the dream came first, then I went up and looked at the poem. 
I can't imagine Mark, that many people have read the poem for for a start. You know, because you know I'm. So I think you must be one of the one one of the few. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a good, and I can see how. I mean, it's a long poem, isn't it? Who Very long. Torture. Yeah. Torch, it's a shit poem. That's not shit. I mean, it's a shit poem. It's obviously a work of art, but I just really think, oh, God, this is a long poem. It sent me to sleep. But, um, I, yeah, I can see why that would that would be a, be a trigger for you. I don't, I think any bad experience with that poem, I think, would do what you did, which is actually make the albatross uh, the albatross. <laughs> um, you know, bad, bad poem it, it didn't... with the albatross. I think anything can trigger anyone. They can't. When I did the spare session, um, Bob Burns was in it, and he was he was saying to me he was unhappy on his wife's behalf. It wasn't he was happy. He put forward the, the idea that people would be uncomfortable with having something shot in the in 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 the, the hypnosis that people like vegetarians would be quite unhappy of shooting something. And at the time, I thought, oh yeah, it's a point. I said, well, you can change it. You know, if you're delivering it to a client, you can change that if you're uncomfortable. But I know for someone who doesn't kill things, who doesn't like violence, who doesn't like killing things. You know, I said I like violence. I'm aggressive enough of happy. What it means, I don't go around killing things. I don't like seeing torture. And but um, it was a dream. You know, we we are we are capable of violence. All of us are capable of violence, and it is a dream. And I think it's important that if we have trauma, that we can see ourselves as in that dream it was important for me to see myself shooting something and empowering myself it was empowerment yeah and I, in my waking life I won't go around killing things but in a dream I have to know that I have the capacity to kill something for my self-protection that's what it took me to give up teaching it took me to think fuck that fuck, fuck all of my responsibilities as you know a mum a parent a wife you know all of that because walking out of a job that was really secure you can always get a job in teaching uh, obviously, well, it's reasons because it's so hard. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I, 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 sorry, Laura. I, I thought it was amazing, to be honest. Who's talking, uh, I can't even see who's, who's talking to me? It's Dave. Ah, uh, Dave, where are you? I, I'm here, but I, I, I've, I've got. Um, I'm normally on my lap on my desktop, so I don't know how to work on the phone. I can't. Uh, you probably can't see me, but never mind. It's <laughs> you can hear me. Hear you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I think I think it's great. You know, it's like you know, using a like a metaphor in a in a healing session. It's uh, it's really really good. I would use that. I would use that uh, a, a lot more. Actually, yeah. I I, I, I think people. Uh, I think I think people are quite open to to like stories and stuff. Um, I really do. I'm glad you think so. I need to have a bit more, um, yeah, maybe a bit more courage with that uh, in terms of, you're right, because I mean, there's stories, but I must be, oh, stories that's requiring too many people, to, too much listening. But you, I'm not, you're not required to listen, are you? you just yeah, well, this is the point, see, but when you're in that state, it's, you know, it's so easy because it, yeah, like the other lady said, the words just sort of washed over her. Um, and I think that's, you know, where the magic happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you for that. That's great. Yeah, met it's all metaphor. Um, Absolutely. Um, it's, all of it is. In fact, you know, Carl Smith, it's all just made up. That's something he says. I was like, remember, it's all just made up. Uh, and that's what metaphor is. It's just made up. All of it, you know, every single hypnotic protocol is just a metaphor, isn't it? How can mm -hmm. you get someone to reframe something that they've experienced in a physical, perceptual plane and get them to re-experience it and in doing so changes it? Mm -hmm. There are so many things in that in that metaphor as well that could appeal to lots of different people. Do you know what I mean? Um, that was really okay. good. And I love the Thank protocol. You. Definitely. Thank you, Thank you Thank Lara. You. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, honestly, I'm, I'm, I mean it when I say I feel really privileged by, by having all of you here. Um, and what a group of amazing people you are. You really, I feel really lucky and um, happy to have you. Uh, I can if you want if you do want me to give you the script I'll uh, just drop me and some of you have given me the email I got an email from some of you loads I don't know if any of you actually found the link on the in my group but loads of people, I put the link on about three times and people still weren't seeing it so that's why I think it's just easier if I have the email and I just say like email everyone um, so but yeah did anyone actually manage to see it in the group the link. The link for what the the, the script the link for this yeah because I well, I emailed you Grace but but yeah people, I got yeah. the email yeah 
Yeah, it always seems a bit complicated. Yeah, so any, any, anything else? Anyone else want to say anything? Just then I think you were spot on about uh, uh, the shooting of the bird, because when I think of how much violence, gratuitous violence, people see in the movies, and the fact that you're talking to their subconscious. Um, I remember reading something Carl Jung wrote back in the 1930s where, you know, stuff like that, the subconscious is very comfortable dealing with all these extremes. So I think maybe a of them might get upset, but yeah, because I worked with a client recently and their conscious mind got upset, but they got the change. Three days later, they got the change they wanted and they were very, so I, I've learned to like take people's initial reactions with a big grain of salt. It's a really good point because it's a conscious mind that's judging and you know think about that fairy tales we get those at five or six and you know the world right. red riding it you know good point we were designed to that's how we learn this is what that's how we change it's you know it's no it needs to be different enough from our conscious waking experience for it to uh, change and that's why i knew that this it was a it was definitely a deep experience for me the the, pro, the actual dream itself i've had a few amazing dreams in my life where I knew this was an important dream. That was a really powerfully good one. I've had a, I've had one where I still worry about the consequences of it. I know it, it was telling me to behave and do something different than I did. And I still think, I, I feel like that. I've got a dream hanging over my head that something bad is going to happen because of something, you know, because I didn't actually follow what I was supposed to do. Anyway, that's another thing. But I think with dreams, it's all, it's all your unconscious work, isn't it? It's all communication of the deepest sort. Uh, okay, got got some emails. I'll save, save, got to run. Oh, she's gone. Yeah, as I was delaying. Okay. All right. So if there's no other questions, uh, then I've managed to keep this to time, which is great. So thank you all very much for coming, for being. I will, I will put the link on the YouTube and you can have access to it uh, as well. All right. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Lara. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so Bye, everybody. Much. Bye. Love Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye, man. Lara, are you still here? I am still here, yeah. Hey, Lara, you know what? Um, I just I'd wait till a lot of people went, but you know when you were speaking, um, it's a lot of distortion uh, sound-wise. So when you weren't speaking, it was silent. As soon as you started speaking, it was like, shh, shh. Really? Yeah, I don't know if anybody else can comment, but it was really difficult to actually hear you because of the shh noise. Oh, no. Did, Did anybody else hear that? Did you hear that, David? I, I didn't hear that. You didn't hear that, Barry. Did you hear that, David? So you're on mute. I'll, I'll ask the two people here. You didn't hear that, Barry. Yeah, I, I heard it, uh, Laura. I, yeah, but it wasn't a problem for me. I could still hear you okay. Uh, it might be something to look at if you're going to do more of these. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So what I was going to say, Laura, if you could, could you maybe um, record an MP3 of it? Because um, yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be really good to listen to again instead of the recording, which for me was really uh, difficult to, two sounds, oh, no. maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's the way my ears work, but having those two sounds was very off-putting, but if you could make another recording, because I really wanted to get into it, but I struggled a bit just because of the sound. Recording, you mean making a recording and not, not outside of Zoom, you mean just do it? Yeah, yeah, like an MP3 yeah, yeah, recording. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. That'd be really good. And then yeah. along with a script, it'd be easier to understand yeah, and, yeah. and follow yeah, yeah. as well that way. Yeah. Oh, so um, thanks. And Barry, thank you very much for, uh, for, for doing the door. <laughs> doing the door for me i think i let in one person but i was happy to do it for you because <laughs> okay. I, I mean i just see these people i was letting them in anyway so uh yeah so um okay let me, i'm gonna start i'm hoping do i how do i save the chat as well that will save automatically Should. Oh, okay so, uh, don't quote me don't quote me on that <laughs> just in case i've you actually haven't stopped the recording yet i was trying to work out how to do that well, I'm upset about that sound. It might have been just me. I don't think everybody heard it. But even now when you're speaking, it's there's a distortion. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's funny. I did a podcast yesterday uh, for someone, and they did say the sound wasn't quite right as well. Right, okay.